Hello and welcome to the deep dive. Today we're really digging into some uh, es essential cybersecurity ideas, looking specifically through the lens of Zscaler's ZDTA exam. Now, this isn't just about you know passing a certification; it's more about unpacking the core concepts, the architecture that helps uh, modern companies stay secure. And the way we're doing this is with a great set of practice questions and the explanations that come with them. They're really perfect for pulling out those key bits of knowledge. Uh, without needing a huge manual. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting how these questions really highlight um, the key parts of Zscaler's whole approach to security. And just for context on the exam itself, the ZDTA, it's online, proctored, uh, 90 minutes long, 50 questions, you need a 70% to pass, and it's offered in English or Japanese. So our goal here really is to help you cut through some of the jargon. We want you to understand not just what these different Zscaler parts do, but maybe more importantly, why they matter for security and access today, getting that you know deeper feel for it. Absolutely. That's the plan. Yeah. Okay. So let's jump right in. Let's unpack this first crucial area. Secure access for internal apps. Okay. So picture of this. You need secure access to your company's internal applications, but without all those uh, old VPN headaches, the slow speeds, the clunky connections, what Zscaler component makes that happen smoothly? Right. That's a really common challenge. And the answer in the Zscaler world is Zscaler Private Access, or ZPA. Its whole purpose is providing secure remote access to those internal apps, but, and this is the key part, without using traditional VPNs at all. And what's really fascinating here, I think, is how it uses a zero trust model. So instead of putting users on the network like a VPN does, ZPA connects users directly to specific applications. Access is granted application by application. Users never actually touch the internal network itself. This massively reduces the potential attack surface, significantly improves security posture. Hmm. Okay, so ZPA isn't just swapping out the VPN tech. It's fundamentally changing the trust model. It sounds like it secures the application itself rather than just opening up the whole network. That feels like a big shift. Exactly. You've got it completely flips that traditional model. Okay, so that handles securing the apps. But what about the people connecting, the users and groups? Once you have this secure app access, how do you make sure the right people have access mm -hmm. and keep that updated automatically, you know, with people joining leaving, changing roles all the time? Yeah, that's the next logical piece, isn't it? If we look at the bigger identity management picture, uh, SCM integration is the answer here. SEM, that stands for System for Cross-Domain Identity Management. Its main job is basically to automate the creation, updating, and deletion, the provisioning and deprovisioning of users and groups right inside Zscaler. So this synchronization, it's critical. It makes sure that all the identity info from your main identity provider, maybe something like Azure AD or Okta, right. is constantly and accurately reflected in Zscaler. This keeps your access policies spot on based on the latest user data. No stale accounts, easier audits. Got it. So SCIM is like an automated sync tool. It keeps Zscaler's user list perfectly matched with your company's main identity system. Sounds like it saves admins a ton of manual work and potential errors. Definitely a headache reducer, yes. Okay, moving on. Here's where things get really interesting for you know staying safe out there on the web. How does Zscaler protect you from websites that are maybe unknown or risky or even those really nasty zero-day threats that nobody's even identified yet? Ah, uh, yes. This gets into endpoint protection, a critical area. The feature we're talking about is browser isolation. What it does is it runs your web browsing sessions in a remote, secure container in the cloud. Think of it like putting your web browsing in a sandbox, but one that's completely separate from your actual computer. Hmm. Okay. Remote yeah. sandbox. Exactly. The, uh, the clever part is that the actual website code, anything potentially malicious, it never actually runs on your device or in your local browser. It all executes remotely in that secure cloud environment. All you get backstreamed to your browser are safe pixels, basically just an image of the web page. This means malware, ransomware, even those brand new zero-day exploits, they just can't reach your endpoint. Wow, okay. That is a powerful shield. So browser isolation basically creates this like air gap. Even if you click on something bad, your device stays clean because the risky stuff is contained way over there in the cloud. Precisely. It isolates the threat completely. Okay, let's circle back to ZPA for a second. We talked about it securing internal apps, but how does ZPA know exactly which internal applications a specific user should be allowed to reach? And how does it apply policies just to those apps? It needs to be granular, right? It needs to be granular, right? 
Absolutely. Granularity is key. And within ZPA, that's the job of app segments. App segments are, well, they're how you define the specific internal applications users can access. And it's not just a general definition. You get really specific defining the domains, the IP address ranges, even mm. down to the specific network ports that belong to that application. Okay, so very detailed definitions. Very detailed. And the whole point of these app segments is to let administrators apply access policies with real precision. It enforces that secure segmentation within the application access layer, ensures users only connect to exactly what they need following that principle of least privilege, nothing more. Right. So app segments are like the detailed blueprints. They define those private apps meticulously so ZPA can control access really tightly. Makes sense. Least privilege in action. All right, let's shift gears a bit. Let's talk about how user traffic actually gets to Zscaler in the first place. Mm -hmm. Traffic forwarding. What forwarding method gives you really consistent results and crucially doesn't depend on whatever proxy settings might be configured on the user's machine? Because those can be all over the place. Yeah, that inconsistency is a common pain point, especially in larger or more complex environments. The forwarding type you're asking about is Z-Tunnel with local proxy mode. It's a, a pretty neat mechanism, actually. It lets the Zscaler client connector, that's the agent on the user's device, forward traffic using a loopback interface. Yeah. It essentially creates a small virtual network adapter right there on the machine just for Zscaler traffic. A loopback interface, okay. Yeah, and the big advantage here is that by using this loopback, it completely bypasses any system level or browser proxy settings the user might have configured. Zscaler gets direct control over the traffic flow. This leads to much more consistent behavior across all devices, and it gives admins greater control, ensuring all the traffic they want inspected actually goes through Zscaler. It's really valuable for managed environments. Okay, so Ztunnel with local proxy uses this kind of virtual connection on the device itself to route traffic, mm. which means it neatly sidesteps all those potential system proxy problems. Sounds like it simplifies things significantly for network teams. It does. It removes a lot of variables. Yeah, this next one sounds truly clever. Let's talk about proactive defense. How does Zscaler help organizations not just detect intruders, but actually uh, kind of mislead them, trick them before they can do real harm? Ah, uh, yes. Deception technology. If we look at sort of advanced threat detection strategies, Zscaler deception is a really remarkable feature. What it involves is strategically placing decoy assets, things like fake servers, fake applications, fake user credentials within your network environment. Fake assets. Yeah, yeah exactly. Digital breadcrumbs or traps, essentially. They look real, but they aren't. And the whole goal is to lure attackers, make them interact with these decoys instead of your actual valuable systems. When an intruder touches one of these decoys, tries to log in, scan it, whatever it triggers, an immediate high fidelity alert. But here's the brilliant part. Because it's a decoy, there's zero risk to your real assets or data. It's yeah. fantastic for detecting lateral movement early on, you know, attackers trying to move around inside your network and catching those initial signs of a breach. It's almost like honeypots, but integrated and more sophisticated. That's fascinating. So you're essentially setting traps and using the attacker's own actions against them to get early warnings. Does it... Um... Does it take a lot of work to manage these decoys? Can attackers figure out they're fake? That's a fair question. Modern deception platforms like Zscalers are designed to be pretty low maintenance and highly realistic. They use machine learning to blend the decoys into your specific environment, make them look completely legitimate. The idea is to make them indistinguishable to an attacker, especially in the early stages of reconnaissance. Got it. Very clever. Okay, let's switch back to traffic inspection for a moment. Um, Encrypted traffic, SSLTLS. Sometimes you don't want to decrypt everything. Think sensitive stuff like online banking or healthcare sites, privacy concerns, maybe performance hits. What Zscaler policy lets you specifically say, okay, this type of encrypted traffic, just let it pass through without decrypting it. Right. That's a really important balance to strike. The policy for this is the SSL inspection bypass policy. It allows administrators to create very specific exceptions for encrypted traffic that shouldn't be decrypted by Zscaler. Okay. So bypass rules. Exactly. And there are a couple of key reasons why this is crucial. First, privacy and compliance. For certain categories, like financial services or healthcare data, decrypting that traffic could violate privacy regulations or company policy. So you need to bypass it. Second, uh, sometimes performance. Decrypting and re-encrypting everything takes processing power. For high volume, trusted sites, bypassing decryption can sometimes help optimize performance without significant risk. It's about being smart with your inspection resources. Right. So the SSL inspection bypass is Zscaler being selective. 
It knows when decryption is essential for security, but also when privacy or performance means it's better to uh, step aside for specific traffic. Smart gatekeeping. Precisely. It's configurable based on risk appetite and compliance needs. Okay, now for the administrators out there. Making sure your security policies actually work the way you think they work before you push them out to everyone is, well, it's critical. Saves a lot of panic later. What a tool does Zscaler provide that lets you sort of test drive a policy? Like simulate a user trying to do something and see exactly which rules would fire. Ah, yes, the policy troubleshooter. This is an absolutely invaluable diagnostic tool within the Zscaler admin portal. It basically lets administrators simulate a user request. You can plug in things like the user, their location, the destination URL or application they're trying to reach. Okay, like a what if scenario. Exactly, what if. And the troubleshooter then tells you precisely which policy rules, firewall rules, URL filtering rules, DLP rules, whatever, would be triggered for that specific simulated request. Its real value is in helping admins proactively find configuration mistakes or, you know, confirm that a new policy behaves exactly as intended before it goes live. It builds confidence and prevents unexpected outcomes, like a safety check. That sounds like a lifesaver, a must-have tool for any admin managing these policies, catching issues before they impact users. Yeah, that's huge. Definitely saves time and potential disruption. All right, let's talk cloud optimization, especially for big services that everyone uses, like Microsoft 365. Performance is key there. How does Zscaler help make sure that when your users connect to Microsoft 365, they're always routed to the closest, fastest Microsoft data center, minimizing that annoying lag? Good question. This involves a mechanism called distributed DNS resolution. It's a core Zscaler feature designed specifically to optimize access to cloud services like Microsoft 365. What it does is it ensures that the DNS lookup for Microsoft 365 services resolves to the Microsoft Edge location that is geographically closest to the Zscaler node the user is connected through. Ah, so it influences the DNS response based on location. Precisely. By directing the user's traffic to the nearest possible Microsoft point of presence, it significantly cuts down on network latency. This results in a much faster, more responsive, and generally better user experience for those critical cloud apps. It's all about optimizing that path. Okay, so distributed DNS resolution is like Zscaler's smart traffic cop for cloud apps. It looks at where you are and points you to the nearest on-ramp for Microsoft 365, ensuring a smoother ride. That's a good analogy, yes. Smoother and faster. Okay, last one, but definitely not least. Protecting sensitive data. This is huge for every organization. How does Zscaler help you control your confidential information? Like, for example, stopping someone from accidentally or maybe not accidentally uploading sensitive financial documents to their personal cloud storage account. Right, data protection. This falls squarely into the realm of data loss prevention, or DLP. DLP, in the Zscaler context, is a powerful set of features aimed at enforcing policies to prevent sensitive data from leaving your control inappropriately. Data exfiltration, basically. So stopping leaks. Exactly, stopping leaks. Zscaler's DLP capabilities allow it to inspect data in transit. As it's flowing out to the internet, to cloud apps, even sometimes within email, it can identify sensitive information patterns like credit card numbers, social security numbers, keywords related to confidential projects, or even specific document fingerprints. And then, based on policy, it can block certain actions. So in your example, it could detect that a file being uploaded to, say, a personal Dropbox account contains sensitive financial markers, and it would block that upload, alerting administrators. It keeps your critical info locked down. Got it. So DLP is the guardian that yeah. watches the exits, identifies sensitive data trying to leave through unauthorized channels, and slams the door shut, mm -hmm. protecting the crown jewels. That's the core idea, yes. Preventing breaches, ensuring compliance. Maybe a final thought to leave you with as you think about the future of secure access, data protection, all of this. Consider this. How do all these individual Zscaler solutions, we've talked about ZPA, ZIA features like isolation and DLP, deception, how do they work together? How do they weed into this single unified platform to create a security posture that's truly resilient, adaptive, and stretches way beyond those old network boundaries? Something to really mull over. Hmm, that's a great point. The sum being greater than its parts. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive today. We really hope you found it valuable. Keep exploring, keep learning, and uh, stay secure out there.